Let me, let me start, Justine, by saying that uh, I really think that it's going to be a while for single-use technologies implemented fully uh, as single-use plants or uh, factories. It's going to be quite a while. Uh, given the, the current product portfolio that a lot of the companies have of approved biologics, um, you know, there's still a, a very significant uh, stainless steel uh, network in place for most companies uh, and it really is going to kind of come down to specific product uh, or spe specific pro uh, portfolios of products uh, and whether single use will really catch on it's definitely got its place it's definitely got its place but again it's it's more I, i'd say a, a niche right now uh, but down the road it'll continue to grow i'm sure uh, the use of kind of hybrid single-use technologies throughout the uh, stainless steel facilities is something that has been going on for many, many years. Um, and uh, let's face it, single-use is not new. It's been around for 20 plus years. Uh, it's just this concept of full single-use that's kind of new, uh, but it's very scale dependent. So uh, Roche Genentech, I don't think it'll be, a, it'll be a while just because of our product portfolio and the volumes that are required. So the scale uh, just doesn't make it so conducive. Yeah, I mean, the single use technologies, as I said, have been around for quite a while. And the real advantage is the capital cost and the time to market. So it's a lot uh, cheaper uh, to build a single use full uh, plan. Uh, and it also has a shorter licensing uh, timeline uh, by maybe up to a year. Um, and so those are really, you know, big pluses. Uh, but the first, first and foremost, the product uh, has, and the process has got to basically fit the scale for single use. And single use is limited to about 2,000 liters. Uh, so, you know, very large products really don't fit into single use. Uh, smaller products are smaller volume products. Uh, could be a really good fit. Uh, startup company uh, that doesn't have you know, uh, a stainless steel network in place. Single use could be, you know, a great fit. Um, so I'd say the biggest barrier right now for the brownfield or the more established companies and products are, again, really the, the scale, uh, the process, the uh, quality requirements, and so forth. Leachables and extractables, again, have always been an issue, again, even you know, th all through the years. So validation uh, and confirmation of, you know, the lack of extractables and leachables has always been an, an issue and something that had to be dealt with. And that's balanced against not having to do cleaning validation and a lot of other things that you have with stainless steel plants, on the other hand. But um, I'd say, you know, those things are not going to go away. There are always going to be issues. And I'd say that it's really important to understand the product and the process and how uh, conducive uh, the process and the product is to single-use technologies. Some, uh, you find some products, some molecules that are very sticky and they stick uh, and they're not really you know, so conducive. Others you know, have got other uh, things. So again, the compatibility between, between the product and the the films uh, that are used in single-use uh, technologies is very important. Um, I'd say uh, these are probably the, the most important things. The, the one thing with single-use is there is no standard, and, and that is actually something that I think the industry really needs to continue to work on, is creating or establishing a standard for the films and the materials and constructions of the various uh, other uh, components and whatnot in single-use technology. So just like there, you know, there is a standard for stainless steel, but again, it's, it's something that I think the industry needs to continue to uh, strive for, is to have a standard, a global standard for uh, the materials of, of construction. It's just something that's, um, again, is gonna be needed long-term.